Hey everybody, John with OWL and welcome to part three. And in part three, we are gonna talk about when and how to use a locker. I wish that you just got off of the highway, flipped on your locker and drove around and hooned it and never had to worry about it, but that is absolutely not how lockers work. And Dan here, uh, Dan Fresh, who I introduced in part one, if you haven't seen part one, uh, we talk all about this uh, axle upgrade from OWL, but Dan, when you're off-road, a locker can be an incredibly useful piece of kit, and it can be uh, something that can allow you to get over obstacles that you absolutely cannot get over if you don't have a locker. And before I actually talk, or before we talk about when to use it, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uniqueness of Mercedes. And it's something that we've discovered, which is Mercedes has uh, some oddities when it comes to their four-wheel drive system. And we have found that the most uh, effective way to get over an obstacle in a Mercedes is to actually put it into two wheel drive, not four, and then lock the locker. And the reason that's the most effective is Mercedes has a bunch of what I will call nanny sensors. And these nanny sensors are there to protect the van from the uh, horribly stupid drivers that we all are. You know, God forbid, that we try to apply throttle to get over an obstacle because clearly we're doing something wrong. And uh, in reality, we're just trying to drive a van off-road. So uh, it adds up the torque being delivered to each wheel. And at a certain point, we've all experienced this in a Mercedes where we start to push the throttle down in four-wheel drive and the van just will not apply throttle. And we have worked and worked to try to figure out why it does this and how to stop it. We can't. Uh, we are yet to solve it, but what we have found is it tends to add it up uh, as a total. And so if you put it into two-wheel drive, it will deliver, deliver double the torque to the wheels before it cuts that torque. And so if you're stuck, uh, these vans are incredibly capable, capable if you put it in two-wheel drive and then lock the locker. Now, when to lock that locker? Dan, do we just drive around on pavement with the locker locked? Absolutely not. Okay, so uh, when should you turn a locker on and when should you not? I'll let you take it from here. You know, typically in a van like this, you're probably gonna use it when you get into really uneven conditions. Maybe you're going through a big rut or something like that to where one tire is gonna lift off and just wanna spin. Obviously the way a differential works is it's going to drive power into here, whichever wheel spins easiest, that's the one that's gonna break loose. When we turn our locker, it's like a spool. They both turn exactly the same speed all the time. So if you get yourself into a rut, one tire lifts up, you lock that locker, all that weight's on that one, it's gonna get great traction, pull you through. If you're in a mud condition, sand, if you stop on the side of the road, we've all done it probably, is you get one tire on the highway, one in the sand, you go to take off and that one tire just spins. Yep. Put that locker on, it pulls you forward. Uh, there's a lot of different uses for lockers. Where people tend to go wrong is they want to drive 60, 70 miles an hour yep. across the desert with a locker on. Will it hurt it? Probably not, but it's not the best use for a locker, especially in something this heavy. And I think you're going to talk more about that with one tire has to break loose to turn a corner. So that being said, we like to use a locker, sandy conditions, muddy conditions, rutted conditions, just to make sure we can keep that van moving forward and not break it. So if you haven't watched part two of this video, watch part two of this series, I should say, and we talk about what a locker does, but Dan touched upon it. Essentially what a locker does is um, it locks this into a single shaft. So the wheels on a standard sprinter can turn independently and they are not locked together. A locker basically turns us into one solid shaft by locking them together so that if one tire is spinning, the other tire must spin as well. And what that or why that is uh, uh, important to off-roading is that if one tire is in the air, or as Dan said, if one tire is in loose dirt or in mud, the, all the power is going to go to the wheel that's spinning. But if you lock them together, all the uh, at least 50% uh, of the power has to go to the tire that actually has traction. And that's the reason a locker works. But when wheels are locked together, and again, uh, video two in this series will explain this, you cannot corner if you have high traction, if the wheels are locked together, because one wheel is actually in a corner traveling a farther distance than the other wheel. And so if this is a straight shaft, you have a problem and one wheel has to slip. 
So that's why you would never want to use a locker on pavement. Now, you could technically drive in a straight line on pavement and not have a problem, but it's not worth the risk. So we really only use lockers when we're in conditions where there is uh, the ability for a wheel or a tire to slip, or if we're on rocks and we're aired down and we're trying to get over an obstacle and those tires are slipping on the rocks. And uh, that is basically the purpose of a locker is to aid traction for a tire that is otherwise spinning. So uh, frequently lockers are used on and then you get over or through an obstacle and then they're turned off. It is not like four wheel drive where you would get off on a trail, turn it on, leave it on the entire time you're off road and get back to the pavement and turn it off. So um, one last thing to yeah. add to that is when you do engage your locker, don't be going 50, 60 miles an hour. We've had that question. We recommend bring it down to about five miles an hour, just a slow roll and make sure you're going straight. Don't be turning when you turn your locker on. Uh, if you're going straight five miles an hour, click it. It, it. it takes literally just a second for it to engage. Give it maybe five seconds while you go straight. You're locked up. Now you're ready to go. And if you are in a situation where you are stuck, just let off the throttle, hit the locker button, slowly engage the throttle and it will lock that locker in. So, I mean, simple stuff just don't be ripping down the freeway or something and engage that locker yeah and this whole axle assembly the locker they're pretty robust but you just want to make sure you know how to use it these are tools as you learn more about off-roading uh things get a little bit more complicated but with some simple understanding uh feel free to watch more videos on lockers there's a lot out there we are by no means the end all be all of information on how to use a locker so educate yourself as you get uh, bigger and batter toys for your sprinter. I appreciate you watching these videos. Again, there's two other videos in this series, so feel free to digest that information. And as always, you can call our customer experience uh, team members on our line, or you can reach out to our off-roads, and they'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again. <laughs>